Hello, everybody, and welcome to Planet Sky FF, the world where everything revolves around £50,000. My name's Serge. My name is James. A week after the Sky Overhaul, back into it. And uh, a better week for you than for me. How many did you end on? Yeah, buddy. Uh, 90. 90 points. Can I see your team? Because I haven't you seen You can, it. yeah. For uh, a Just comparing it to mine game and week where you want. Uh, just under 15,000. I've halved my rank. I'm up to the dizzy heights of 34,000 now, right. which is still uh, not great in this game, apparently. But I feel like I'm on the march now. Basically, you had captain returns in uh, two all, of them. All three game days, mate. I will definitely why, take... Why have you got uh, Wilson as captain? Oh, this set, is for next... Set up for next week, right, mate. Right, okay, yeah. Come this on, is everyone, where... Bus team, mate, come on. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. The lack of usability of the Sky website is diminishing my interest in playing this game. Oh, shut the fuck up, honestly. Like, I don't even know what my rank is. I, I look on leaderboard, right? It tells me I'm 108,000, but then I don't know. <laughs> how do I... That's your rank. <laughs> yeah, but then how do I go and see my historical rank? Like, I, d I didn't write down what I was last week. No, I... So I, now how do I know? I think you've dropped about 30,000. I think we were quite similar. Well, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just uh, not very usable. Um, so I don't feel like I'm tracking. Like I got 48 points. I don't know. Is it good, bad? Well, ugly? I think that you should write into Sky and tell them of their oh, suggestive ideas. Or, or maybe one of the experienced pros can tell us that there is somewhere grand. on the site that we just can't find it. <laughs> exactly. I'm sure it is. But um, I can't say that I'm spending a lot of time on, on, on Sky. But ultimately, the difference was nailing captains versus not nailing captains. I had Salah on, uh, on the first day. That was perfectly fine. He got me 14 points, followed by two blanks. Um, Pepe and then uh, Haller. Did you not captain Sterling on a Saturday? Uh, no, I captained Salah on Saturday. Oh, okay. And cool. so Salah, Salah did get me points. I had clean sheet points from Trent and Gilbert, but my trio of Man City let me down. You happened to have the one City asset that did get any kind of returns. Um, you went with a Bamiyang over Pepe, and uh, that obviously paid off big time. And um, McGinn, in the end, got you some points as yeah, well. Yeah, pass and tackle bonus. Mm. Uh, really pleased with that. The good thing for me is that I've got somewhere to go from Mason Mount to McGinn. The bad thing for you is you already own McGinn, so that's not an obvious move for you. <laughs> but you do need to move away from Mason Mount now with his... We, we don't, injury. at the time of recording, know how bad it is mm. um, with an impact injury like that. And obviously the way Mason Mount turned his ankle, you fear the worst for him. I think one of the things that's probably worth discussing here is what is the situation if we get a timeline of two weeks? Do we just hold him? Do we sell him? Liverpool at home this week. I mean, if, if they said, right, he's back next week, but he's probably going to miss the weekend, like he's not going anywhere. Yeah, he's I staying. agree. Two weeks, if he's back the next, the game week after next, then I would probably write it out. What's staggering about Mason Mount at the moment is his ownership numbers in the Sky game. So he's owned overall by uh, currently 21%. He's owned by 62% of the top 1,000. Yeah. So all these guys are going to be considering making a move. And it, it does feel like the the big question mark in Sky now with, with these ownership owners, a lot of people will be on Mace amount or certainly would have been looking towards him. Where do we go? Obviously, I'm sitting here like a dickhead with two players at almost identical prices already in my team, in John McGinn and, and Harry Wilson. And I did stress, uh, basically the team is the same as what I said it was on the extended overhaul pod last week. I went with exactly the same thing, that having those players at the same value was potentially going to give me a problem. I've got 0 0.8 in the bank. My instinct of what to do if Mount is out for a month or so is to come down to Cantwell. Yeah. Uh, I think it's 5.9 Cantwell. So it would be a saving of Mason Mount is 7.3, save mm -hmm. me 1.4. I'd left 0 0.8 in the bank anyway. So it then would give me 2.2 .2 million to move on from Harry Wilson, who I feel like is probably the, the one I'm not happy with for my overhaul selection. 
Harry Wilson has just been not getting... He's getting like f- between 50 and 60 minutes. It's an annoying number. Um, it doesn't make much difference in the Sky game because you get... It was just about whether you start and he has been starting games. But you'd still, you'd, if he was hauled off after 80 minutes, you would be fine with that, right? If it's that extra 20 to 30 minutes in each game that he's missing, that is a bit... Feels a bit unnecessary. Almost like, you know, we talked about whether or not Liverpool have got in the loan agreement that he has to get a certain number, amount of minutes. It feels like that is 100% true because he's playing, but then he's not getting full games necessarily yet. Um, but Harry Wilson is cheap, right? So I don't think it's the wrong decision to have Harry Wilson in there. No, I'm going to leave it for... I mean, he's going to be my captain in the, in the Friday night. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's, it's just the, the decision, I think, from my overhaul I'm least happy with. I'm looking at Solanke getting minutes up front now with Wilson. Suddenly he's competing with um, Fraser. Josh King played in a wide area against Everson on Sunday. And I can see them minutes potentially being reduced. I don't believe all this crap about it. he's He's got it in his contract about certain minutes. Well, I, I think did it no- is true. I no? did notice that he played exactly 55 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's true, you know. I think they can stipulate in the contract they will get. A I'd, certain I'd just of be really surprised if Bournemouth went along with that. I, I don't see what the what Bournemouth get out of that deal. Well, they get Harry Wilson, don't they? So, so you would go to to McGinn, would you, Suge? Um, maybe now I might get a Bamiang. That's the thing, and which means I don't have necessarily enough money. I came out of the overhaul with two point six in the bank, which I quite like because it gives me the opportunity to uh, make some moves but I'm not 100% sure I'll be honest with you I haven't I haven't decided yet on whether or not I'm going to move away from Mount uh, just some names to when when um, do we know when we're going to get injury news from him oh, I wouldn't we? expect it till probably Friday as in confirmation mm. and, and it might be depending on the scan it might be you don't actually get the information till next week yeah and then it's they a tough they have to let the swelling die call. down sometimes and stuff yeah what you don't want to do because you obviously feel like I think we have to work on the assumption he's going to be out for a little while. I I think a month is probably a fair assessment. So you do want to make the move now. We should look at some of the names to to consider as replacements. I think John McGinn at 0.1 more, if you've got that in the bank, I would recommend. Mm -hmm. Get on it. He's going to pick up all sorts of bonuses this season, John McGinn, probably bar the passing. Um, Todd Cantwell, 5.8. He's, as I said already, probably the way I would likely go. He's ironic. I've got Mount in my FPL team as well. I might make the same change there. It just allows a little bit of time, I think, mm-hmm. and, and thinking one of the things I stressed was the concern about going down to Campwell, that he, he's basically the lowest midfielder that you can go to. And obviously, say, if Ranchich or Hernandez longer term gets back in the team, it becomes a, an annoying problem. But I'd be leaving excess amount in the bank to to deal with that problem I think you'd go camp or ever say Buendia at 7.6 just feels like too big a difference to go for Buendia I think that's the same case in FPL Gineppo might be one that, that people are, are mentioning 7.1 if you haven't got the sort it's a little of cheaper 19 points so far um, from uh, kind of limited starts and obviously gives you possible captaincy cover against Bournemouth on Friday night that's the, that's the one game because I, I I had a premeditated move this week, which was going to be Haller to Wilson uh, to give me coverage, and then on Sunday go from Wilson to Vardy, and then that gives me coverage for a couple of games for with Leicester uh, for captaincy. I just look more at, at, at Gineppo's fixtures for the weeks after this Friday night. They yeah. don't look great. So Southampton, I wouldn't be keen on. If you want to come down a little bit, Scott McTominay. 6.8 million got the man a match in the United Leicester game at the weekend mm. and he's taking you know, over he's solid in there at the moment and in games against lesser opposition I think there's, there's possibility for, for past bonuses as well Dwight McNeil's an interesting one not getting spoken about same price 7.3 Burnley have a good run of fixtures starting with um, Norwich at home this weekend Dwight McNeil is one that interests me he honestly does Selected by 2.38% uh, of owners at the moment. And that's a real differential. Otherwise, you're kind of scraping barrels or you need to go up. Yep. So it might be a, a couple of moves to move it on. And that's why I, I would... I don't really... This is the first instance I've been in this position. With the Allison one, it was really obvious. 
I get him Sideways out. move. And Edison, get it done, move on. With this one, I'm really not sure. Like, if, if they genuinely said it's two weeks, I don't know if I want to force the transfer on that for someone like a Campwell or a McNeil, no. who I'm not no. going to captain. No. I might not get... I might get two twos out of it, for example. And I'm thinking about the, the longer-term benefits of maybe just holding that. It's not like... We know that a lot of the guys who listen to this will play FPL as well. You've not got to worry about the depreciation in value or anything. I would maybe stick it out if it's just two weeks or so. I would stick it out. Because they've got a great run well. of fixtures after Liverpool as well. And I think that's why a lot of us, I think that's why so many have picked up on Mount in terms of want those power players up the front, didn't feel the confidence to go to Abraham, and partly because you're not going to captain him. Yeah. So Mount gives you that really nice Chelsea coverage, and it's a, it's a real shame. I know it's Ross Barkley who missed the penalty for Chelsea last night. It's eight million. Doesn't particularly interest me. No. Um, you need to Hudson Odoi is going to need a run of games before I think you can look that way. Real interesting one. How people would go about playing it. I don't I don't know the right way to do it. For a lot I, of I think people, it's very probably... easy because it's only difficult for you because you've got a, your midfield is pretty much all in that same kind of price bracket. Yeah. I, not many people will have Mount and McGinn and Harry Wilson and Campwell or whatever. So there is two or three ways to go. But you're right. It, it boils down to. Um, it boils down to what you think in terms of um, uh, a strategy and how long you want to ride it out for. What are your captaincy picks for this week? We've only got two ga- take match days within this game week. Um, f- the first thing for me says no transfers other than anything from Mount. Mount. I wouldn't consider anything else. Oh, beyond Harry Wilson Friday night, I would advise that if you don't have Southampton Bournemouth coverage that you don't bother with it. Unless you you have a current strategy, which I feel like you'll be making too many moves, which would be, I don't know, let's say you were going to move to Callum Wilson and then move to Vardy next week for that Super Sunday. That's my game plan at the moment. Right, okay, that's interesting. So what move would you go? Ale to Wilson. Yeah. To, and then next Sunday, yeah. Wilson to Vardy. So you get Bournemouth captain against Southampton and then home Correct. to West Ham yep. and then move to Vardy home to Newcastle. Correct. I'm not against it. I feel it's probably too many transfers for not enough return. That's how I feel. I feel like you're just constantly moving to try and cover the captaincy there. Yeah, but then also uh, Vardy, long t- Vardy, I'm happy to keep Vardy long term thereafter because I'm not then jumping back off Vardy to get back to Hallett. So I'm not going to do a full circle, which is why I think it's right. It's a progression from here to there. Otherwise, I would be going from Haller to Vardy anyway because I have... But two and a half well, yeah, once, in the you, bank. once you end up with Vardy for that Newcastle fixture, you'll stay because a couple of weeks after the international break, yeah. you've got the Southampton away fixture on a Friday night. Yeah. That's why it's a progression. I, to... I have more plans to, I, I probably plan to get Vardy myself. And I, I took the the assessment when I did the overhaul that I'd start with, or Bamiang's definitely staying, Aguero and Salah. And then when I got to the Leicester Newcastle fixture, make a decision in terms of which one would go. That That was my thinking. Mm-hmm. Old Captain Harry Wilson Friday night. Personally, I wouldn't force Callum Wilson in. It's difficult because, like as we said, he's returned in every game and he's yep. he's doing the business and he would be the best captaincy option in in that game Friday night. I don't think there's a doubt about it. Yeah, I feel the like good thing is we got chalk like cheese here. We're going to find I feel out. Like it's, well, I feel like it's one to to miss out on if you if you haven't got it. Um, Saturday, We're up to game week six now, and I've only made one transfer. So I don't feel like the same. Yeah, but I don't feel like um, I'm I'm short on transfers. No, but there's, we're there's, still only making transfers when we need to make transfers. I, I would look at that with Mount and go, Mount was going to sit there for me, no doubt. Of those three that I picked, Mount, McGinn, Wilson, it was definitely Mount first. That was the one I wanted the most. McGinn gave me a nice little coverage for Monday night. Harry Wilson gives me a nice little coverage for this Friday night. But Mount was the one of the three I I really wanted. I will go Harry Wilson captain Friday night. I will go Aguero captain Saturday at home to Watford. And I'll go Aubameyang captain Sunday at home to Villa. Mm -hmm. I have uh, Callum Wilson as captain on Friday. but I don't own him yet, but uh, barring no dramatic injury news that he falls down doing his shopping in Sainsbury's or whatever. Uh, Callum Wilson. (laughs) Um, I am going to stick the armband on Raheem Sterling on Saturday. 
Although I might put it on Kevin De Bruyne because I need a bit of differential. And one thing I know with Kevin De Bruyne is that I don't think he's going to get dropped again. He'll definitely in play a hurry. this weekend as long as he gets through the Man <laughs> um, City game and scape tonight. Exactly. And then on the Sunday it will be um, Mohamed Salah. So you're not going to force in Aubameyang? No. And you go Salah away to Chelsea rather than Pepe at home to Villa? Yeah. And this is quite a tight call. I think that's the right call, by the way. I think it's a tight call, but that's who I'm going to... I may as well do it now so that in case I uh, get hit by a bus. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think that that's, that's my plan. So it'll be Wilson, uh, Raheem or KDB, I'm not sold on. More than likely KDB, actually, to be fair. Feel like doing something a bit different. I do need to do a bit of catch up, and then Mo Salah. I'm not sure that's the right move. You think Sterling? Yeah. I've, why, why is he sitting there otherwise? You're not going to catch him at home to Watford. Yeah, but Sterling in this game. What's the fear? Is it the in, rotation? In in this game, no. It's just KDB is more uh, consistent. Raheem might be more explosive, but KDB is more consistent. Raheem's had two blanks this season. KDB's had no blanks. But with the captaincy, you want the explosion. Uh, yeah, but then look at it this weekend, right? I had two blanks out of Pepe and Sterling. So I'd rather... the No, if you offered me consistency over explosion, I'd take consistency week in, week out. I think you'll find that in this particular game, Serge, that it's the explosion of the captaincies that are going to massively affect your rank. Mm, it wouldn't surprise me if they balance I, themselves I, I, out. I think you're making that call between De Bruyne and Sterling a little bit on fear that Sterling might not start. No, I don't think so. I think he'll start. I haven't got any doubts in my mind about him getting drops this weekend. They need they need three points. And if they can, they need to rack up the goal difference as well. So it's just the consistency with Kevin De Bruyne is there. Um, and he has double returned in, in games as well with goals and assists. So um, I think Kevin De Bruyne is, is interesting. It's only five points difference between them so far, De Bruyne and Stalin. And obviously De Bruyne's played the bulk of a game less as well. So... Um, uh, there's also yeah. possibly maybe more worthwhile mentioning 17 points between Aguero and Sterling yeah Aguero's particularly on form at the moment isn't he so mm. uh, midfielder I wanted to mention it's probably it's not something we'd spoken about previously I want to speak about Richarlison Richie and one of the things I'm exploring is obviously the idea, if I go Mount to Campwell, am I then going to be looking on a move from Harry Wilson and 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 where would I go from there? Now, I'd be a bit short of Richarlison. But there's an argument he's a bit of a beast in this game. Okay, make the argument. 36 points so far. Yeah. Um, he had six points this weekend, including a minus one for a yellow card. So a tackle... Tackle, tier one, he hit assists and points. Last week was 20 points. I mean, that's always helped when you score two goals. Tackles again and shots, tier two bonuses this time. Uh, tackles in tackles in almost every game week, bar game week two. Four of the games is returned tackle bonus. Yeah. I tell you the thing that's striking about him as well, and it, maybe it's not such a big thing at the moment because they haven't got uh, games where you captain him coming up. They haven't got single game days or anything like that. They might when we finally find out the November TV fixtures. When he hits halls like the Wolves game, he's really hitting halls. Yeah. Because he's picking up the, the other stuff with it. So, I mean, if he scores twice, he's obviously, he's going to hit shot tiers because he, I mean, he, he has more shots than a lot of players anyway. And he keeps picking up these tackle tiers. Mm. Um, they're obviously pressing more than they were previously, I think, Everton. That, as as an average, no, 36 points from five games. It's decent. It is decent. It's He's joint highest scoring midfielder at the moment. With Ironically, KDB. one more than Mason Mount and seven more John McGinn is, is actually fourth at the moment. I feel like I wanted to talk about it because I can't get away from the idea with Richarlison that's too expensive. But I don't know if that's right. I don't know if that's me still attacking that from uh, an FPL perspective. Goals and assists if you rather want. than all the other points that come with it. Because that's a nice... T if he's picking up the tackle bonus nearly every other week and you know he's going to pick up the odd goal on that, mm. that starts putting you in a really nice average points per game. Yep. And it's possibly something that's maybe being overlooked at the moment with Richarlison. His ownership at the moment is 
11 and a half percent. I think a lot of that's affected by, like I said, there's no obvious captaincy days. Mm -hmm. Luca Dean being quite nicely priced at sort of 8.6 is in both of our teams. Yeah. I don't know. It's just one I feel like we should keep an eye on. I'm, I, I can't help but look at it and feel it's too expensive. And it's not being talked about at the moment because a lot of us are looking for a Mason Mount replacement. But if we come down to a Campwell, suddenly a lot of us are going to be in a position where we are maybe looking at a, a Richarlison. Does he, for example, it will sound ridiculous, but does he maybe offer greater long-term value than De Bruyne? Yeah, uh, a quite million possibly. cheaper. The other thing that I found interesting in this game at the moment, um, I don't know what your thoughts are on this. This is all about something a little different. Last year, VVD was the highest point scorer in the game, just shy of 300 points so far. And the defenders did rack up shitloads of points. Whether or not it's a it's reflective of the cl lack of clean sheets that are out there at the moment and, and, and what have you, although at this point in the season, there's the same number of clean sheets as there was last year. Um the def top scoring defender is on 32 points and then you've got a handful of 30s and 29s. Midfielders, 36, 35, 29s. But then the strikers are in the 40s and you've 50s. You've got Pookie nearly 60 points, 56, 54, 47, 46, 43, 41, 40. There's like eight to nine players there in the 40s. There isn't a single midfielder, defender or goalkeeper anywhere close. And... I don't know if we um, thought that that made more of what points were potentially available from defenders and should have just piled into attack a little more. Like you, you're heavy on attack now. The overhaul's passed. Do you think it's going to stay that way? For me, yeah. No, no, no. As in, do you think the game is going to stay that way where the points are so heavily skewed with the strikers? Yes. Yeah, I think this is far more where we've had the, the big FPL debates in terms of whether you stay with... Big at the back. Yeah, I, I think we should ban that term or not. There's no debate on this for me. Like mm -hmm. you've, it, my opinion, and it's just my opinion, you've got to have at least two of these big hitters. I'm talking Salah, Sterling, Aguero, Mane, or Bami and Kane, for example. I'm talking yeah. the top, top forwards in this and game. And preferably three. No, I think it's okay to be bouncing around the Alaires, Wilsons. I mean, Pookie's a great price, mm -hmm. right? It's okay. It, it just feels like... For me, going Salah, Aguero, or Bamiang gives me a, a no frills captaincy coverage from the two best teams in the league. So in any in any game week, you can kind of fall back onto it and captain them if the fixtures don't look great. And Aubameyang, for me, as I said last week, was the absolute standout for me because of the the Sunday fixtures and the run of games that Arsenal yeah. have coming up. I gambled on Pepe, and you are not alone, well. mate. It obviously failed. But, I mean, Pepe still is taking shots. It's just a case of uh, them flying into the top corner at some point. He was quiet at the weekend. His mm. his ownership numbers there, you've got up uh, 8%. Pepe. 8%. 8% is pretty low. I just want to check on... on In the all, top 1,000 teams is 20%. I mean, Aubameyang at uh, 20% is not, is not huge ownership. But, again, a little bit like Mason Mount. Here's the clue. 71% of top 1,000 teams own Pierre-Emerick or mm -hmm. These guys know, mate. <laughs> These guys listen to Planet FPL does Sky FF. Yep. <laughs> um, what, so that's it then, really. I don't, I don't have anything else to add on Sky. But uh, yeah, Aubameyang was the good shout. Yeah, I think lots are still very relevant from things we said on the overhaul. I was so impressed with myself for not touching it from mm -hmm. what I did. I expected I'd listen back and be and like, tinker. oh, I need to make loads of changes. The only one I really thought about actually was getting Kane in. Mm. I'm glad I didn't. Because I, I had a bit of a doubt in my mind in terms of whether I should be looking at Harry for beyond this Leicester fixture in terms of the free Saturday fixtures he has. I think there's a there's a debate coming and we'll be in this position next time, this time next week where we might want to ask the questions of if Harry is the sort that we should be diving in for, for those yeah. free Saturday fixtures. It might be we're sitting here this time next week and we're talking about Sun at 10.5 and going, fucking hell, this is an explosion. Yeah. Just some spares, actually. Toby Alderweireld is racking up some serious pass numbers. Mm-hmm. 
consistently and it's worth keeping an what's eye on what's his price in this game do you know what's oh, up your head it's, it's, I can it, pull up I did look it's expensive it's 10.2 I think Ooh, Toby Alderweireld 9.8 9. very expensive he's in the t- uh, Trent Alexander Arnold bracket at 9.9 9, so too a much I think expensive. but he is just dive into Toby's numbers just briefly if you can Such. here we go um, past tier 2 Clean sheet and an assist at the weekend. So that's obviously a very good record. It's past tier in four of the games, I think. Uh, past tier one, past tier two, past e- tier two. Even so. past tier two away to Man City. Mm. He's picking up some serious passing numbers, Toby. And there are a run of games coming up for Spurs. I mean, we're capable of keeping a clean sheet at Leicester. But beyond Leicester, where you're thinking, OK, yeah, genuinely, seriously, Spurs can be targeting some clean sheets in these games. And, and Toby, if you end up with a defensive problem... Yeah, might be one to look at. You could make an argument, for example, that Alderweireld might return better than one of the Liverpool guys in the next four or five weeks. But I think it's not one to force an issue unless an issue creates itself for you. It was interesting listening to the video of finally caught up with it on Friday that Will, Luke and Dan Cox did Yes, on Fancy Football Hub and talking about the year that, that Dan won the game. And he only made about three transfers in the defence in the whole season. Mm. Saved them transfers for up front. Yes. But Toby's one to keep an eye on if you fall into a problem, despite how expensive it is. The money's got to be... Look look at the returns that Mount and McGinn have had so far this season. Right, they're good picks. Mm-hmm. That's part why I picked up these guys at, at that valuation. The money feels like it's got to be up front, then some premium guys at the back and the midfield right now is that is the least important look at them big hitters it's only De Bruyne and Richarlison in in and around those top totals right mm-hmm. and they're so expensive compared to the budget guys Daniel James is one actually that people might want to look at as a mount replacement if you've got a bit of money spare I can get to Daniel James but I'm not overly keen personally Madison is a little too far for me but if you've kept it back James Madison might be a a consideration for you. And uh, Rodri's a further jump at 8.5. He's picking up some some serious tier numbers. He hit passing tackles and shots at the weekend. Yep. And it's not often that that happens no. for, for a player. 14 points is a fantastic haul. Uh, he's only owned by 1.7% of the top 1,000. Little bit pricey. And mm. and you will, you will be drawn to the players that you know can provide greater attacking returns. Yes. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, so there we go. There's a little rundown on James and I's weekend with Sky Fantasy Football. I'm hoping for a better weekend this week. I'm um, hoping you have a better week. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's see what happens. This It's rare that the likes of Salah uh, or Sterling or whoever blank two in a row if you look at their history over the last three or four years. So in in any given week, this could be a, a big week. So let's and see so what you happens. still don't want to catch Raheem Sterling on Saturday off the back of two blanks? Mm. It's it's. I just don't think it's as clear cut as you think it is. No, I'm not saying maybe, it's, maybe it's not. It's not that it's. It, it's not that I definitely want to captain KDB over Raheem. I just don't think it's as clear cut as um, potentially Aubameyang over Pepe. I think is very clear cut for me now. Despite the move I made, I need to move away from that now. So, so there you go. If you do have any questions, we'll be on Twitter and all the rest of it. Good luck with your Sky Fantasy Football teams, um, and ciao for now. Cue music, man. Ciao. Good luck, everyone. Messi, I'm gonna miss it, I'm gonna miss it, I'm gonna miss it, I'm gonna miss it, I'm gonna miss it.